Welcome everybody to Let's Talk Bible. I'm your host, Maurice I. Jones with International Ministries of All Got Everything. I do apologize for the late uh, posting, but I definitely wanted to get on here live with you tonight and just have a discussion with you guys about the very topic that you see in the title here, which is why silence and waiting is power. Um, and just being uh, transparent, I'm in, in a season of my, of my life where I believe um, a key message for myself and I've been hearing throughout 2023 is uh, being free in 2023. And what that means for me simply is just being free in Christ Jesus, knowing who, who I am at the core of my walk with Christ and really living out a full life that is pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. Not doing things my way, not trying to, you know, make plans instead of allowing God's plans to manifest itself. And one strategy, the main strategy that I've been getting from the Lord this year is waiting in silence, um, allowing things to, to manifest and basically um, trusting in the Lord through a process and and not speaking th- <laughs> or speaking the results of things rather than um, the, the hopes of things. Like we speak faith, um, but it really amplifies, I believe, what God is doing through me by 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 moving this way is, is it amplifies uh, really trusting and having faith in the Lord. That way you don't get discouraged. That way you don't lose hope. That way you don't lose your sight of what God is doing through you. But when you're actually just humbling yourself before the Lord, waiting when he says to to wait, moving when he says to move, you can be in the right place at the right time concerning the things that God has been doing for you. And a lot of times we go through cycles. We go through cycles of of sin. We go through cycles of victory. We go through cycles of different things um, that were different battles that were cycling, um, different relationships that were cycling. And it happens over and over and over again because we haven't trusted in the Lord, because we haven't waited, because we haven't really heard from him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so tonight I want to unpack that for you guys here. Um, it just gave you some things to think about concerning wh- wh- why sometimes God called people to be silent, why, um, you know, he, he really encourages us to truly um, take our time and it's important to take our time. It's important to to move according to God's plan and not our own, um, because it can be delayed. When we when we do things according to our plan, uh, we end up like the the children uh, of Israel that were in cap- that were in captivity longer than the prophetic time uh, that was spoken over them. But then there was times when the children of uh, of God, the Israelites, they were obedient to God, and because of that they were not in bondage as long as, as they were. And there's different accounts, different things that happen throughout the Bible um, that allude to this. You know, when, when you're walking with God and you're trusting God and you're listening to God, what does that look like? What does that, you know, how does that play out in your life? And so I kind of wanted to start here. Um, a very popular uh, scripture, right? The book of Joshua. And now if you're familiar with the story uh, in Joshua, where, um, you know, they marched around Jericho seven times. So originally what happened was they sent to, um, they sent some spies in there uh, to kind of scope out the land and kind of let them know, you know, you know how the land was good. It was, it was good for taking, it was good to, to conquer. Right. Um, and, and there was um, a young woman in there. I want to get her name correct. Cause I don't know why it slips in my mind right now, but. Rahab. Okay, so so Rahab was uh, was living in there, but she but she um, but she came across these men and basically protected them from being captured from those within, um, and then gave them a way out. So when the so later when Joshua and his army came to destroy the city, her family was protected. Now, there's a lot of different angles to the story, a lot of different things that transpired. But a key factor that happens in this story is not only was her obedience allowed her family uh, to be preserved and covered by God, um, it it opened up, you know, more opportunity for her, opened up opportunity uh, for for the land to be given back to the people of God because that land was for them. But 
in that God called Joshua to lead his army to march around the walls of Jericho seven times, right? We're all familiar with that scripture. Um, and and one thing I, I noted there was that they, they, were, they were to be quiet. And so I believe Jericho, if you put it in a sense, Jericho is like the destination that God has called you to. He said, this is what I have for you. And this right here is how you attain this thing. This is how you acquire this land, this thing that I have for you that is waiting for you. This is how you get access to it. And for a time, they, they could have just rushed into it. They could have just went straight ahead and got it. They could have like spearheaded it, right? But God gave them a specific strategy. God had them walk around in silence. One, I, I believe that confused the enemy. They were like, what is going on here with this army? They're just walking around. Like, what is this? Because they were heavily guarded. They were prepared to protect the land. The people on the inside um, were prepared to protect their land. But after a while, you know, they, they let their defenses down, you know, um, because they did it for seven days. So on that seventh day, they're like, okay, here they go again. Here the Israelites go again, just um, walking around, just moseying along, right? And so one, I believe it let the enemies guard down. And then on the seventh day, they marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. And the scripture reads here, um, and I'm in Joshua chapter six. Let's see. I'm just going to go to the seventh day. And it, and Joshua 6 and 15, that reads, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawn of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed, uh, they, they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said, Joshua said unto the people, shout for the Lord hath given thee, hath given you the city and the city shall be accursed even it. And, and all that are therein, the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that uh, that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. And when you take of the uh, when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel cursed and trouble it, for all the silver and all the gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord, and they shall come into the treasure of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they uttered and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both men and women, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. For Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied unto the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, and ye swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her fathers and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of, uh, and of iron, they put into the treasure of the house of the Lord. Now, why am I reading this scripture? What does it have to do with, with being uh, silent? So I, I believe in this time, had they not been silent, had, had they not moved, the way they did, they wouldn't have had the impact 
of it. Maybe the amount of people marching around shook up the land enough to destabilize the wall. So when they shouted, the vibrations crumbled the walls. That's just my scientific approach on the situation that happened. Um, because they marched around seven days by the end of the week, you know, if I'm a soldier on the uh, inside the camp, I'm like, these guys are just walking around. You know, by day seven, I'm not thinking they're going to do anything. I'm not, you know, really counting. I'm like, here they go walking again. Um, and so so a lot of things transpired. But because they were obedient, because they followed God, because they did things according to his plan, they were able to execute the strategy and they were triumphant. and they overcame the city. But in that, there's something key that I wanted to point out here. He said to not take certain things of the land other than the silver and the gold and give it unto the Lord. But but basically, there's going to be things that are going to be appealing when you get to this destination that you're going to want to grab hold of. Then God says, I'm going to put you in this place, but keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes peeled because once you get into this place, there are going to be things there that are not for you. Yes, this is the destination I called you to. Yes, this is what I have for you. But this is uh, this destination for you to conquer this this part of your journey. This thing I've called you to. This destination. Yes, I've called you to it. But once you get there, there are going to be things there that are not for you. And so, whether it's like your career, um, whether it's um, your ministry, whatever it is that God has placed in your heart to do, um, there's going to be things. There's going to be people. There's going to be actions. There's going to be certain processes that are going to come to pass that are not going to be for you. Just because everyone does it this way or because the land was filled with that when you got there does not mean that that was for you. I hear often that they say, um, you know, the, the market is, is saturated, right, um, the, in different industries. That does not mean that that is for you. And give me just one moment here. I meant to do this in the beginning, but I wanted to make sure um, I got the I got the word out to people while we're going live. Give me just a moment. All right, just. Thank you. Sorry, I meant to say that earlier. If you're watching, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as we continue to go forward. But there are there's so much there's so much power, the power and the impact that took place when they paused, when they waited, they waited and the fire struck. They struck that city, they burnt that city up, they came, they saw, they conquered because they were obedient to the Lord. All right. Um, and so that's why um, it's important to remain silent. Let's go to the New Testament. We're going into the book of Acts. Jesus told them to wait in the upper room. He said um, in Acts chapter one, starting at verse 12, then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelothus and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. And in those days, uh, Oh, wait, before that. Um, so uh, let, let me just start at the beginning. <clears throat> let me start at the beginning. I should have started at the beginning. My, my apologies. Um, I'm going to just start at verse 3. To whom, um, I mean, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, um, Jesus being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise. Wait. For the promise of the Father, which he said, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, what thou, um, 
wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and in Samaria and to the utmost parts of the earth and the uttermost parts of the earth. Right. God. Uh, Jesus went to his disciples and, and declared that they will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon them. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. But there were certain instructions. And just to reiterate, those that are joining now, the focus of this message is really understanding why it's important to be silent at times to wait. Now, you can preach the gospel. Um, you can do all kinds of things. But at sometimes when you're really seeking the Lord, he's going to say, I have something for you. But in this season, you must be quiet about that thing. Now, I'm not saying be quiet about spreading the gospel. I'm not saying being quiet about sharing your love for Jesus Christ. I'm saying there are certain things that God has called you to do. There's certain things God has placed on you that is not yet time for you to release it. And so they had to wait. They went up to the upper room and they waited. They waited and waited and waited until eventually Holy Spirit came upon them and filled them with the Holy Spirit. It says Peter stood up and, and preached among the multitudes. Um, and, and they even had, um, they were even filled with such power they were speaking in tongues to the point where they were speaking um, in everyone's language, right? And everyone from different places, from different areas that came to celebrate um, in this time of celebration uh, for the Passover, <clears throat> for, for Passover, um, came from all the lands, different spoke, speaking different languages. Everyone was able to hear the message in their la uh, language. And it said that as a result of him spreading the gospel, I believe about 3,000 um, men um, and families were saved that day um, and gave their life to Christ um, as a result of, of Peter, <clears throat> one waiting for the right time. Had he, because some people left, uh, I believe it was about 400 that went up to the upper room, right? There was about 400 that went up to the upper room, but only 120 were there when they got filled. Let me just confirm that. Right, so there was only 120. So that lets me know that word came to the people when Jesus was preaching while he was still here before he ascended up. There was a whole crowd of people, but not everybody waited. But those that waited, they got filled with the power because they trusted in the Lord and they waited for the next instruction. <clears throat> Man, I'm so sorry, you guys. So they were waiting for the next instruction. And that's what God is having you to do in this season, in this time right now, that there's a powerful assignment coming your way. That there's something that God has placed you to do as far as ministry, as far as sharing the word of the Lord, as far as doing something that's going to be pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. And, you, and he's called you to do that special thing, but you have to wait on him. You have to wait because sometimes what will happen is the enemy will try to come in and twist up the plans of God. And you, what's supposed to come to you in the next couple of months might take in a couple of years. Yeah, you'll still receive it, but it prolonged the time that you were to receive it. But but now in this season, if you want every if you don't want to go through the cycles again, if you don't want to have like that repeating occurrences of the same things happening over and over again, um, you know, you never, you know, you never make progress in, in areas, you never make progress in your business, you never make progress in, in, in some relationships, you never um you know, uh, really scratch the surface of those things that, that you feel led to do, that you feel called to do. You feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're stuck where you are and there's nothing changing. Take time with the Lord. Wait and be patient. In that, in that silence, in that waiting, he's going to give you instructions, but you have to be patient. Um, which brings me to another point where Jesus himself was talking, right? 
Jesus was um, with his disciples. I'm in Mark chapter 8. So let me bring that up here. And it says, And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi, and by the way he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But um, but some say Elias, and others one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom do ye say that I am? So now Jesus is talking to those that are in his inner circle, those that are closest to him. Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ. And he charged them that they should not tell no man of him. Why? And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. <clears throat> and then that goes into that well-known scripture where, you know, um, he, he spoke these things and Peter uh, rebuked him for that. And he said, get thee behind me, uh, Satan, um, because these things had to come to pass, but Jesus did not want them sharing that he was the Christ because he had to reach a certain in a, sense, a certain mile marker. He had to do, um, he knew what his plan was and he really had to take time to equip those. Um, you know, like, like imagine, <laughs> like I, this might be a bad example, but imagine Jesus is their boss. And he said that this is a new protocol that we're doing. But the, the head CEOs do not like this protocol, uh, but we're going to try this. And Jesus is like, we're going to try this and get the results first. That way we can show them that this method works. But they, you know, say the disciples went over to, you know, the higher management, the CEOs, and they were like, this is what Jesus is doing. They would have stopped him right then and there. They would try to kill him. And then we would have never saw the fullness of of that assignment the same you know that, that might be a bad analogy but but had jesus um not instructed them to do that had they not waited and kept silent even though he was giving them himself in the flesh the word him as jesus christ in the flesh giving them the word had he not done that the whole the whole um flow of his ministry would, would, have, would have halted. He would not have been able to get as much done as he did. But because that they were obedient, because they listened to him, because they waited, even though they knew he was the Christ, they knew what would, what would come and they knew what it, what it took. That even led, like even though Peter rebuked them here, that led him to Peter being the one to stand up and declare the word of the Lord when the Holy Ghost came upon him, as I read in the last section. And so there's so much importance when we're pursuing God to be patient and to understand that it's our, we have to wait. And, and they were right there with Jesus. Imagine being right there and Jesus in the flesh is saying, I am the son of man. I'm the son of God. I am here to set the captive free. And you're like, I got to tell everybody. And he's like, no, wait, don't tell them I'm the Christ yet. Just learn. Just listen to what I'm saying. Listen to what I'm saying before you go off. And that's something that I had to learn, too. A lot of times, you know, in prayer, God would be like, give, give me this idea, this idea, this idea. And I would get burnt out because I would try to do all these things that God is giving me to do. But then I started being patient and I started just waiting. And I realized everything started falling into place. And the more I waited, the more I felt led to wait. And the more things started happening, the more I waited, the more I listened, the more I trusted in the Lord, and the more I was silent on things. Because the enemy has a way of there, and there's people in your circle, it might be family, it might be friends, there might be people who come like as a as a as a fiery dart of the enemy to try to throw a dart in, in what you're doing. Oh, you know, I, I'm about to start this new diet, I'm about to go to you know this thing, I'm about to uh, do that. I'm about to do that. Whatever it is, and there's going to be people in your life. Might be coworkers. Might be uh, whomever. That that if, if the if it lands on the wrong social media, definitely <laughs> lands on the wrong ears, and they say things that is going to deteriorate your focus, deteriorate your drive. Um, make turn off your ears to God and turn on your ears to your flesh and miss out on what God is doing. 
But when you're quiet, when it's just you and God on that, you can maneuver through everything. And because you're not sharing it with people, there's no way that the enemy is going to stop that plan. And then it's just you and God at that point. And the only person that could stop you is you. And so take note of what I'm saying here. Um, I hope you take in what I'm saying here in regards to having your time this season, this year, in 2023, being patient, being silent, and waiting on the Lord. And when you do that, you will see things happen like that in your life. And I pray this was a blessing to you. I pray this word was fruitful for you. Um, definitely leave a comment below. Leave a prayer request below. Uh, we're going to be here every week for you guys. Hopefully, and, and next week we won't be uh, coming on here late. But I thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. I pray that this message blessed you in some way. And as always, be encouraged, be blessed, be inspired. Until next time.